the first civilization. Ancient Egypt is argued to be the first civilization on the planet. Ancient Egypt has many features to warrant it being one of the most fascinating and well-developed civilizations to have ever existed. But let's have a look at the length of the reign of the Egyptian empire, which is one of its most impressive feats. Ancient Egypt arguably had its origin circa 5600 BC. This is according to the Julius Africanus chronology. It became the first nation on the planet to gain the title civilization. And until collapsing with the end of Cleopatra's reign in 30 BC, it had a long and steady, consistent reign. To put how long this is into perspective, Cleopatra's reign is closer to our own lifetime than she was to the building of the pyramids by Pharaoh Khufu, 4800 BC. And she's closer to our lifetime than to Pharaoh Khufu by about 2800 years. Another interesting feat of the ancient Egyptians is how many people they could feed. The ancient Egyptians mastered agricultural farming by developing irrigation. Because they knew the Nile would flood on a regular basis, they developed lanes for water to flow from the Nile into dry land. This produced land so fertile that the ancient Egyptians were feeding more people per acre of land than any other nation, according to some in recorded history. There is also a lot of architectural mystery surrounding the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians were fascinated with philosophy and science. Their scientific understanding of agriculture and the universe has been unrivaled since the fall of their empire in 30 BC. For example, the Great Pyramids were the tallest buildings on the planet for over 5,000 years. The architects of the pyramids used Pythagoras' theorem thousands of years prior to Pythagoras' birth. The pyramids were also built to the accuracy of 1 60th of a degree and correlate to very complex mathematical equations as well as true north. Scientists and architects cannot even today replicate a 60-foot version of the Great Pyramids, which stand over 140 metres tall. Interestingly enough, before the expedition launched by Columbus in 1492, as the first interactions between Europeans and Americans started, there is evidence of previous interactions between the Americas and Africa. According to Professor Van Sertima, Africans influenced early American civilization. He draws attention to Olmec heads displaying Negroid features, similar north and south facing pyramids, which would have required similar understanding of astronomy and architecture. Other similar traits such as false beards, Purple symbolising priesthood and double crowns also existed both in the Americas and in ancient Egypt. Cocaine and tobacco has also been found in the bellies of Egyptian pharaohs. The cocaine plant is natively American. This indicates that ancient Egypt was trading with America at that time or had previously cultivated the plant after extracting it from the Americas. Professor Andrei Wierniski, Wierniski found many early Olmec skulls to be African, and this, these skulls dated between 2500 to 400 BC. The ancient Egyptians also had phenomenal scientific insight. The Dogon tribe, which resides in Mali, West Africa, and claimed to have inherited their understanding from ancient Egypt. There is evidence that the Dogons knew of Sirius star B hundreds of years before its discovery in 1862 by the use of telescopes. But the ancient Egyptians didn't just spring up out of nowhere. Their civilization took thousands of years to develop. Many historians argue that the people of the ancient Sudan, Tasseti, i.e. Kush, and Nubia migrated in a northern direction as the Sahara Desert expanded. 
This is because culture doesn't tend to randomly spring up out of nowhere. It tends to develop slowly and gradually. This means that if we can find similar cultural traits outside of Egypt that predate ancient Egypt, it is likely that these areas influenced ancient Egypt. This is likely through the migration of people from these places into ancient Egypt. For example, 200 pyramids are found in the Sudan. Wall paintings similar to the burial artwork of the ancient Egyptian pyramids have also been found further south of Upper Egypt. In, and this is in Teseti, which is Biblical Kush, so Kush which is also found in the, in the Biblical scriptures. Gold ornaments in tombs depicting similar myths to ancient Egypt, such as the Order of the Flight, are also found in the Sudan, or ancient Kush. A statue of Horus, the eagle-headed eagle god of sight and consciousness in ancient Egypt, was also found, but its manufacturing predates ancient Egypt, once again indicating that these cultures migrated into ancient Egypt, bringing their culture with them. The all-powerful god Osiris seems to have come from Ethiopia. An ancient Egyptian text called the Laden Papyrus reads, I looked out before to observe Osiris the Ethiopian. But before ancient Egypt had a hope of forming, something else had to occur. Before humans settled, they had to function as a group to hunt and gather on a daily basis. This meant constantly moving to find new vegetation or new herds of animals to hunt. Now, not only did this constant foraging take up a lot of time and energy, but it also took up a lot of resources. And nowadays, we can go to a local shop which has sourced food and farmers who have used very sophisticated techniques to farm and grow crops. But out of a 200,000 plus year um, history of human existence, we have only been farming for about 12 to 23,000 years. If we refer back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, due to the constant stresses of daily living requirements, humans needed to exert themselves to find food and build shelter up until 23,000 years ago. Up until, this point, most, uh, until, up until this point, most of human time was spent fulfilling basic needs. Discovering that seeds can be planted to grow under optimal conditions quickly led to creating settlements and the abandonment of a nomadic lifestyle, i.e. a travelling lifestyle. Refinement of these techniques, techniques became the responsibility of farmers. This then freed up time for the rest of the population who quickly became builders, teachers and philosophers. To put this into perspective, if human existence was a 90 minute football match from beginning to present day, humans didn't discover farming until about the 83rd minute. Humans first settled and built lasting structures at around the 87th minute. The first civilizations were built in the 89th minute and we are currently living in the 90th minute. This is too strong a correlation to ignore. Farming free time, which was initially dedicated to hunting and gathering and allowed us to pursue our true potential and essentially climb Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a species. The ancient Egyptians were phenomenal farmers. The predecessors of, or the predecessors to ancient Egypt had settled in modern day Sudan and Ethiopia. The Sahara Desert expanded, eliminating fertile land, which would normally produce plentiful fruits and vegetables. And this also dried up and vanished. The only fertile land that was left was bordering the river Nile. The Nubians from Tarseti, which translates to the land of the bow or Kush, migrated towards the southern part of the Nile, which is called Upper Egypt. Under the command of their leader, they then started to farm the land as the Nile started to dump fresh, fertile soil onto the land as it flooded. 
it is argued that because the foundations of the civilization were more evenly suited to the physicality of men than women and because or men and women and because the creation of life has historically been associated with femininity a more equal and arguably matriarchal culture emerged women in ancient egypt could rule vote and own property it would take britain until the 20th century to achieve the same level of equality which was experienced in Egypt over five to seven thousand years ago. There is also evidence of ancient Nubian observatories that predate Stonehenge by around 2,500 years. Northeastern Africans were already starting to explore their own reality shortly after they learned to settle and cultivate the land. This is a natural step towards religion. As people free up time to create a society which supports their basic needs, they can start to question their purpose. Religion commonly provides a framework for purpose and a harmonious society. Religion provides a guide as to where we should be going, what we should be doing and how we should behave, be behaving, etc. Humans have only recently had the luxury of exploring the meaning of our existence because up until recently, most of the time would have been spent fulfilling these basic needs of, or for existence. At no other time in human history have people been, been fed, uh, been, have there been more people fed per acre of land. Farming had to free up time for them to spend time in the pursuit of esteem and self-actualization needs. This is where we start to see, for example, for the first time in history, creationist stories start to emerge, i.e. myths telling us about the creation of humanity. These ancient Egyptian creationist stories arguably went on to lay the foundations for the Abrahamic religions, i.e. Judaism, Christianity and Islam and even inspired the early psychologists such as Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud in their understanding of the human mind. The first civilizations of ancient Egypt provided us today, for example, with the foundations of written language, architecture, science, religion, ethical ideas for or ideals for the, the balance of good and evil, and also government uh, infrastructure. Their combinations to the ancient world flowed throughout Greece and Rome, then, and it then passed into Europe and into our modern day reality. We have all been hugely affected by the huge contributions that the ancient, that ancient Egypt had, have made to our modern experience of the world. Now for this task, what I would like you to do is explore this question. Human beings have been migrated from one place to another for the past 300,000 years. This has evidently led to a flow of information and technology which has hugely benefited a multitude of populations such as our own. However, migration has also read, led to civil unrest, invasion and the depletion of resources. Now, what I would like you to do is split yourself into two groups. One side present an argument for open borders i.e. the free movement of, of human beings and the terms for open border immigration. The other side, I want you to present an argument for closed borders, disallowing any migration from your country of residence. I want you both to, both to elect a spokesperson, each to stand up and say your piece. And then after that, under control of the teacher, I'd like both sides to debate with each other to find a common ground which you can agree on if you can. Make sure that you address the below points. One, the effect of, on the economy. Two, the flow of skilled workers. Three, flow of new technology. Four, holidays and five essential staff for the public sector, i.e. healthcare, travel, etc.